In this video, we're gonna be talking about the best rep tempo, but not like this. Nice and slowly, begin. Keep the movement nice and smooth, and you want to stay sitting upright as much as you can. Ah, that's better. We only had to speed it up 607%. So now we're gonna be looking at the research and seeing if there's a best rep tempo for muscle hypertrophy, strength, and we'll touch base on power. But before that, we need to understand the different types of muscle contractions and how you can interpret rep tempo. A concentric muscle contraction is when the muscle shortens under tension. An eccentric muscle contraction is when the muscle lengthens under tension. And finally, an isometric contraction is when the muscle is under tension, but it has no movement. So now we're actually gonna see this in practice. So here I am doing a bicep curl, of course, and we've got the shortening phase under tension, the concentric, and then the eccentric phase, the lengthening under resistance, and finally the isometric hold. Let me know if you do 21s in the comment section below. But now I'm gonna look at rep tempo and explain that. So normally you see maybe four to three numbers explain a repetition tempo, and the first number is the eccentric phase of the lift, so the lengthening. The second number is the pull, so between the eccentric and concentric phase. The third number is the concentric phase, the shortening under resistance. And the final number is the pause between repetitions. So here I am doing a barbell bench press, and now I'm starting off with the eccentric part of the lift first. So you can see it's going down for about two seconds and up for about two seconds as well. So that would be a two zero two zero. However, when we go to a pulling exercise, like a pull down, we start off on the concentric phase of the lift. So we'd technically be starting off on the third number and not the first number. And here you'll see I've got a slower tempo on the way down and I'm actually having an isometric hold to get that contraction before that eccentric part. And now we're gonna be looking at some of the research in a lot more detail. So first of all, we're gonna be looking at best rep tempo for muscle hypertrophy or muscle size. And in 2015, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, Dan Ogborn, and James Krieger done a meta-analysis looking at this very topic. So we're just gonna skim through, obviously I've highlight, highlighted some of the stuff here. You can see the links for these papers in the description below. But what they looked at was uh, inclusion criteria where they actually looked at tempo. Um, and the studies were a minimum of six weeks in duration and they all carried out to muscle failure. So in short, there was eight studies, and I'm gonna show you the eight studies in the overview chart in just a bit. Um, but the results they found were that um, when rep duration, so total duration was between 0.5 and eight seconds, there was no significant difference uh, based on if you used a quicker tempo or you used a slightly slower tempo. We're not talking Fred Hahn tempo here, but we're saying up to eight seconds. So that could be a three one, three one tempo. However, when we look down at the studies, and this is what we have with the scientific literature all the time is, as you can see here, out of the eight studies, they were all untrained. This one, it doesn't say if they're untrained or not. It just says they were sedentary women. So we could probably assume that they were untrained as well. Another thing that the authors also highlighted was the different modality used to measure muscle hypertrophy and how they were inconsistent. But when we look down at the discussion points and some of the uh, things they found, originally where it looks like on this table here that a fast and heavy, a fast light compared to a medium and slow tempo, you can see there looks like there's a, a a significant difference here. However, when they done a uh, meta regression, that wasn't the case as you can see here, fast and heavy and one medium because out of the eight studies, only one of them could technically fall into the, the slow category. So when it comes to muscle hypertrophy, tempo may not have a impact on the amount of muscle mass you can increase when you're between that 0.5 to eight second range. So now we're gonna be looking at the best rep tempo for muscular strength. And in 2017, Davies and others looked at a, this very specific topic. They looked at movement velocity, 
Whenever you hear movement velocity, just think of the speed of that movement. So let's get straight into it. So starting off, uh, it was comprised of 15 studies and they looked at fast, moderate and slow resistance training velocities. Um, and we did actually have some trained individuals here. But before we look at the results, we're going to scroll down a little bit and just classify what they class as fast, moderate and slow. So anything which was less than one second concentric, less than one second eccentric was classified as fast. If it was between one to two seconds on the concentric eccentric phase of the lift, then it would be moderate and anything above two seconds was classified as slow. So we're not talking super slow here. And one thing that I've already mentioned is that when you get closer to a heavier load, and what they found was over 85% of that 1RM, um, the load will dictate the movement. Then the closer you get to fatigue, the slower it is to perform that repetition. And we're going to be looking at a specific study just after this, which actually didn't take people to uh, failure on their lifts. So if we go down, what I really liked about this study uh, and the way they wrote this out was they actually identify each individual study. So like those with trained, which those were untrained. Uh, so you can really pinpoint of references and take a, a deeper look. And as you can see here, they've laid it out nicely, fast and slow, trained. But let's get down to the result because that's what you care about. So when they looked at the combined studies and dynamic muscular strength, again, when you see dynamic, it just means movement. There wasn't a significant difference. The fast training increased their strength by 21.8% and the moderate to slow training increased it by 20.8%. So when they combined all intensities, uh, there was no significant difference. However, when they took into account intensity, basically the load on the bar for this example, uh, there was a small trend of favoring a faster lifting tempo over a moderate or slow tempo. But that was between a 60 to 79% of your 1RM range. And even though we're looking at strength, this is typical percentage of load when it comes to your muscle hypertrophy rep range. So when looking at that, this could give us a, a good indicator for when we're in between those ranges to go with a faster tempo rather than a slower tempo. One thing that I want to add about the power aspect here is looking at the elderly population in this range from like 19 to 73 years of age. And what they found were that the elderly who performed more fast explosive movements would not only improve their dynamic muscle strength, but also their development of muscular power. And that has shown to help them with balance, help them with preventing falls. So it could be that if you are training elderly clients, that you do incorporate some faster tempos and some more power work to improve things like their, their balance and also to prevent the risk of uh, falling over. Gonzalez, Bandilla and others in 2014 actually done a study where they had 20 subjects, half of them do bench press for six weeks, three times per week, maximally velocity, so as fast as they could lift it. And then they had the other half, the other group, do it at half the speed. We actually done an Instagram post on this, and what they found after the six weeks was that the group which lifted it as fast as possible got better strength gains than those which done it at half the speed. So in summary, you've got a few things to think of when looking at a selected tempo to use. Number one, what feels natural to you? I have certain exercises where I go for a slower tempo and I have some where I go for a faster tempo. Another factor you need to take into account is your goal. Are you a power athlete? And if so, then probably do power or explosive movements, faster tempos in the gym when you're in the gym. Other factors to take into account are fatigue. You might start off fresh at the start of that set and you might be doing a, a 2 0 one tempo, but as soon as fatigue catches up, as soon as you get closer to failure, your rep speed will slow down, as you can see. Next one, and the final one I really want to add, is that load will dictate tempo. 
So as you can see, I actually tried that test. I put 100 kg on the bar, done three reps on my tempo that felt natural to me. And then I tried to slow it down with a five second eccentric and then a five second concentric. And as you can see, it didn't go that well. So load will also dictate the tempo that you use. I just wanna finish up and say that tempo is one small component. If you're looking to maximize your muscle hypertrophy, then the two main factors here are mechanical tension, where if you have a slower tempo, maybe you're eliminating momentum, so that may help, but also total volume, sets times reps times weight. So as you can see, if I'm purposely slowing the tempo down, I have to take the weight down to accommodate that. If you like this video, hit like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe.